So I'm curious from the widest view, what is your perspective at the moment on the crypto market and the Bitcoin correction that we're seeing? Range bound. I mean, I, I, I you know, it's a sound, very simple word, you know, range bound. Uh, but the reality is, is there's meaning behind that. There is a, bu- a bunch of cross currents that have gone on in the crypto markets over the last six months. There's been significant demand uh, for uh, underlying demand for both Bitcoin and Ethereum for totally different reasons. Ethereum, lots of excitement on the upcoming, uh, you know, the upcoming, well, hopefully, <laughs> fork to uh, to the new protocol. And Bitcoin, because look, there's a global macro picture out there that people don't want to talk about as much anymore. But the reality is there's lots of monetary printing going on. There's lots of spending going on and it's not really manifesting itself in any of the typical inflation hedges. We heard all about Bitcoin demonetizing gold in the first half of the year. Now no one's talking about it, but nothing really has changed. The other big cross current that's gone on over the last six months is not surprising, uh, the rise of meme coins. And so we've seen all sorts of uh, diversions in and in get, you know, basically I call them the Ralph Cramden coins for anyone who ever goes back and watches old episodes of the honeymooners ralph cramden was a bus driver played by jackie gleason and while i can't remember how politically incorrect it probably was and i'm sure it was from that era the fact is many and i mean many of the episodes had to do with get rich quick schemes people love to get rich quick and the reality is is bitcoin which is pricing in somewhere around, if you believe it, uh, 15 to 20 X appreciation uh, from current levels isn't fast enough or big enough for people who want to see, you know, 100 X or 200 X or 500 X appreciation from something that has no particular reason for existing other than the fact that people believe, well, they can get these sorts of returns. And so we saw the same thing in the ICO era. We're seeing it now with meme coins on swap markets like pancake swap. It's just those cross currents uh, are contradictory to each other because the money that might flow into uh, crypto from at, at the top big cap level, like the Bitcoins and the Ethereums, are being siphoned away into other uh, other coins. People in crypto are generally impatient. They're looking for a larger gain. 10, 20 X is nothing if I can do 100 or 200, right? Do you think that Bitcoin still has another 10 or 20 X in it? What do you believe are the potential targets for 2021 or the next cycle? And as a corollary, do you believe that this cycle has topped or that we're part of a larger cycle still? I don't want to answer the first question particularly, but I'm going to. The second one is an emphatic no. Uh, <clears throat> so let, let's go through why I said that. I believe Bitcoin trades like an option on its own adoption. I've said that many times. Uh, I think that at the end of the day, if you're a monetary historian, and some of us are, are, are certainly... Uh, hobbyists when it comes to monetary history. You know, people who have read, whether it's the Bitcoin Standard or it's like Cowrie sells, other, there's lots of different books on monetary history. Some even are taught by professors in, in, in school, although very few of them these days seem to actually care. You know a few things. You know that the world uh, existed uh, until we went, had mo- money was basically created, we created one of the largest single ex- expansion and standard of living. But the reality is, is we went from calorie shells and some offshoots like my, one of my favorite one is in the Bitcoin standard talks about the big rocks on the Isle of Yap. But the fact is there's something to provide a non manipulatable store of value to base transactions off of. So whether it was shells, rocks, or ultimately gold or silver for thousands of years, there was something. Since 1971, the world's had nothing. Now, when you consider 5,000 years of recorded human history, the last 60 years or 50 years is really a pretty short time. And so people who declare you know, that the world of fiat currencies where you actually have nothing backing your currency except for the military and the faith of the governments who create them, to declare that game over, that we know that that's the right way, just are not really accurate in historical epoch terms. So understanding that, the question becomes, will something arise to become a global store of value to at least be a counterweight to governments in the way that gold is a counterweight? Governments have spent too much, uh, needed to come up with the gold one way or another. 
uh, in order to be able to finance what they were doing. Maybe not immediately, but eventually. The reason Nixon closed the gold window is because after the Great Society, combined with the war in Vietnam, the U.S. could not afford it anymore. And we were losing all our gold reserves and said, oh, we don't want to do that, so screw it. We'll just be the dollar. And we are the only real superpower out there that's involved economically worldwide. At the time, it was the United States and the Soviet Union. The Soviet Union was a military superpower, but decidedly not an economic superpower. So it was a monopower system where we were able to exercise that power and did. And it's created enormous benefits to America. I mean, let's face it, we've been able to import our standard of living for 50 years, and it's been awesome. If you're if you're in this country, people take it for granted, but that is the case. But to get back to Bitcoin, it's an option. If there's going to be a counterweight, if there's going to be that global store of value, which I suspect there will because power abhors a vacuum, then the question is, what, what? how will that manifest? Will gold will be reborn as gold bugs would have you? I doubt it. I think in the digital age, we need a digital asset. We need one that is completely impossible to counterfeit. One that's totally verifiable by a computer. One that is easily divisible. One that is portable. One that can you know, be very, you know, as I said, you know, verifiable, all the sorts of things that Bitcoin has. And when you go through the characteristics of money, Bitcoin literally is basically perfect money. The only thing missing, and it's not missing, it's only partial, is acceptance. Now, what is acceptance? Acceptance is people say, screw it. This is what it's going to be. I'm going to accept this and I'm going to move on. And the question becomes, if it gains that acceptance, at what price does it reside? And the answer, I think, can easily be determined in two steps. Step number one, what's the monetary premium afforded to gold today even? And step two, what should that monetary premium be for a digital store of value? Well, the monetary premium for gold is pretty easy to determine. The simplest way is to use the gold-silver ratio. Arguably, post William Jennings Bryan cross of gold speech in the 1800s, over the next 50 years, gold demonetized silver. Gold's ratio to silver in the Earth's crust is 15 to 1. Gold's ratio to silver's price for thousands of years was 15 to 1. Ever since gold demonetized silver, the ratio is banged between 70 and 100 to 1. So, what does that tell you? That tells you three quarters ish of gold's value is its monetary value. That pegs it at around $9 trillion. $9 trillion is about 15 to 1 appreciation from Bitcoin today. Bitcoin becomes digital gold. It's worth $9 trillion. So that's the first. That's your base level. Now, if you listen to Pomp or Mark Yusko from Morgan Creek, or you listen to Max Kaiser or other people who talk about the Bitcoin standard, they say, well, wait a minute. The global money supply indicates that the monetary value of gold should probably be a lot higher because a lot of money has been printed since you know we basically achieved that plateau several years ago. That's a fair point. So there's certain upside there, but you got to get to first principles first. The first stop for Bitcoin, if it succeeds, i.e. option, is probably a 15 to 1 rally from where it is today. So now your question is, what is its likelihood of success? 